Good afternoon, everyone. And it's lovely to see you and thank you for attending this service. Before the service begins, I would like to explain the display here. As you'll see, the service is written by the women of England, Ireland and Wales. The blue represents the sea around the British Isles. The green is for the pasture land. The brown is for the earth and the, the cities and towns with the houses. And of course, the globe represents diversity. And we have seven candles here, which represents the seven regions. Welcome to our World Day of Prayer, celebrated today all over the world in seven regions. This is reflected in our service as we light candles during the service. And warmest greetings from the women of England, Wales and Northern Ireland, three countries which form part of the United Kingdom, together with Scotland. They are known as the British Isles which is situated in northwestern Europe. You'll be wondering why Scotland is not mentioned. The answer is historical. In 1928, Grace Forgan from St Andrews attended a missionary conference in Jerusalem and from the conference brought back news of the World Day of Prayer to our island. It started in Scotland with the first service being held in Morningside, Edinburgh in 1930. Travel communications, etc. was not easy and so the two committees remained separate. We are still separate today, but we meet together once a year and share our materials and ideas. We rejoice that although they have many things in common, they are a diverse people. Over the years, the British Isles have welcomed people from all corners of the earth, some who have chosen to come, others who are refugees, fleeing from persecution in their own lands. Today, the country is a multi-ethnic, multicultural, multi-faith society. England, Wales and Northern Ireland are proud of the diversity and anxious to preserve the difference of language and culture and we rejoice with them in this. We rejoice in the variety of natural beauty found in the British Isles, its mountains and craggy moorland its fertile fields and pasture land, its rolling downs and spectacular coastal scenery, and its small islands. The theme of our service today is God's promise, found in the book of Jeremiah. I know the plans I have for you, focusing on freedom, forgiveness, justice, and God's peace. Let us see how this promise can be, can be a sign of hope for all people. Our first hymn is Longing for Light.
These are the words of the letter that the prophet Jeremiah sent from Jerusalem to the remaining elders amongst the exiles and to the priests, the prophets and all the people Nebuchadnezzar had taken into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. This was after King Jeconiah and the Queen Mother, the court officials, the leaders of Judah and Jerusalem, the artisans and the smiths had departed from Jerusalem. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all the exiles whom I have sent to exile from Jerusalem and Babylon, build houses and live in them, plant gardens and eat what they produce, take wives and have sons and daughters, sorry, take wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage that they may have sons and daughters Multiply there and do not decrease, but seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile, and pray to the Lord on its behalf, for in its welfare you will find your welfare. For thus says the Lord of the hosts, the God of Israel, do not let the prophets and the diviners who are among you deceive you, and do not listen to dreams that they dream for it is lies that they are prophesying to you in my name. I have not sent them, says the Lord. For thus says the Lord, only when Babylon's 70 years are complete will I visit you, and I will fulfill to you my promise and bring you back to this place. For surely I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans for your welfare and not for harm, to give you a future with hope. Then when you call upon me and come and pray to me, I will hear you. When you search for me, you will find me. If you seek me with all your heart, I will let you find me, says the Lord and I will restore your fortunes and gather you from all nations and from all the places where I have driven you, says the Lord, and I will bring you back to the place from which I sent you into exile. The people of Jeremiah's time found themselves in a place where they did not want to be, away from their homeland and excluded from their culture, worship and homes. There are many people who have settled in the British Isles after having fled their homeland and culture. In the land of prosperity, there are those who are poor and in the midst of crowded cities, many are lonely. How can we tell all their stories? We cannot, but we can hear their voices telling us to listen to what it means to feel excluded in England, Wales and Northern Ireland. England, Wales and Northern Ireland form part of the United Kingdom along with Scotland. Although there is much that we share, we are also diverse, with different languages, cultures and governments. We are steeped in history, 
Many of our cities have beautiful ancient buildings dating back to medieval times, including cathedrals and churches built by our Christian ancestors. Since the 1600s, the UK has grown economically through its trading exploits, and this brought a great deal of government benefit and economic stability to our trading partners, as well as to ourselves. It resulted in industrialization and enabled great discoveries in science, maths, medicine, and industry to be made. The culture of the UK has radically changed since those days, with the emphasis now on aid and encouragement. Our population is approximately 65 million people, mostly living in the dense urban areas of the cities. These populations have been enriched over the centuries as the influence of economics attract people from far and what near. Integration of all peoples constantly weigh on the mind of government with legislation in place to discourage discrimination. In 2020, having left the European Union, the people of the United Kingdom faced new challenges to establish our place in the world. The emphasis being on taking care of the world and making it more sustainable for the future. With a downturn in religious observance, like much of Western Europe, the church continues to be at the forefront of projects to help those in need, both locally and on the world stage. England, Wales and Northern Ireland have been influenced and shaped by an array of extraordinary talents through science, music, theatre, poetry, literature, dance, festivals and other forms of art. Music is a vital part of our culture, and across the nations it is expressed in many different forms, with song, poetry, and hymns recited around the world originating from the countries. We are also a nation of sports lovers, participating in all sports that are compatible with our environment, and even some suitable for when the sun shines. The slightly damp climate in these three countries means that traditional food is more often comforting and warming. Stewing dumplings, hot pies and sweet puddings have been enjoyed for hundreds of years. There is a strong sense of social identity with people meeting up in cafes restaurants and public houses. Our tastes have expanded to cover food from all over the world, particularly from Chinese and Indians. As a single World Day of Prayer organisation, the three voices of England, Wales and Northern Ireland have come together to present this year's service, recognising our differences but also our common ground. The first World Day of Prayer service was held here in 1932. The first services were held in, London, in the London area and the wave of prayer moved across the west of England to Wales and Northern Ireland. In those days, travel was not easy, so it is now so much more sensible for the women of England and Wales to set up their own national committee and then later joined with Northern Ireland. Let us now pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth 
as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we reflect upon God's promise to the people of Judah, consider the promise of God. For surely I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans for your welfare and not for harm, to give you a future with hope. Then when you call upon me and come and pray to me, I will hear you. I have here a packet of seeds a seed is full of potential and hope. What might God be saying to you? What hope does God have for you and your future? We pray for what is in our hearts. What stops you from hearing God's call? We pray that we might hear God's voice. Seeds need the right conditions to grow. Where do seeds of hope need planting in your life? Where do seeds of hope need planting in your community? Where do seeds of hope need planting in your country? How can these seeds of hope be nourished in your life in your community, in your country. Take these thoughts and plant them like seeds as a reminder of God's constant love and your hopes.
God's presence is in us and with us. Let God guide you, lead you, restore you, and heal you. Go with these blessings in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, who is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. There's a welcome cup of tea for you all eh, down in the corner here. We would like if you could join us. <laughs>